When a tug pushes right in the middle of a moving ship, would you be surprised to hear that it actually results in a turn? Conventional wisdom states that pushing anything in the precise centre should result in the object being deflected sideways with no rotation generated. So why doesn't it work with ships? Well, it all comes down to fluid dynamics, which ship handlers simplify into a set of rules that we call pivot point theory. You can picture the pivot point when we consider the motion of a simple bar in a frictionless environment. Apply an instantaneous force and you will generate a translational motion sideways and rotational motion about the bar's centre of mass. When we look at the first part of that motion, it looks like the bar is pivoting around a point just here. This is the imaginary pivot point. For ships, because the motion is so slow, modelling it in terms of a pivot point just simplifies things so that we can get our heads around it much easier. This time, the force is applied by the propeller-rudder combination, resolved into two vectors relative to the ship's axis, one generating headway and one generating a turning force. The vector generating the turning force will do the exact same thing that we just saw happen with the bar. It will move the ship about its centre of mass, generating both a sideways motion and rotational motion, making it look as if the ship is rotating around an imaginary pivot point, approximately a third of the ship's length from the bow. Of course, ships don't operate in a frictionless environment, so rather than turning about its centre of mass, it will actually turn around a point between the centre of mass and the centre of lateral resistance. For us though, just saying that it will rotate around its centre is good enough. When the rotational force comes from the rudder at the stern of the ship, the imaginary pivot point will be approximately a third of the ship's length from the bow. When that force comes from the bow thruster, the point will be approximately a third of the ship's length from the stern. The same is true of course if you use a tug to generate the force instead. The imaginary pivot point will just be nearer the end opposite to that from which you apply the force. As you move the tug towards the centre, the point will also move towards the centre, eventually coinciding when the tug is pushing against the pivot point at the centre of the vessel where no rotational force will be generated. So what about the situation that we talked about at the beginning of the video when we said that a tug pushing in the middle of a moving ship will result in a turn? Well, the key difference is that the ship is moving ahead. When a tug pushes in the centre of a ship, it will move the ship bodily sideways, but the ship's hull is also going to induce movement in water that surrounds it. As soon as we add in some forward motion of the ship, the bow is going to be constantly entering still water, and the stern is going to remain in water that is moving sideways. The end result is that a tug pushing against the centre of a moving ship will appear to generate a turn. To counter that turn, just move the tug forwards to a position approximately a third of the ship's length from the bow, dependent on the ship's speed of course. Notice how the position of the tug coincides with the pivot point of the vessel if you generate a turn using the rudder. Instead of having to remember that the ship induces movement in the water which in turn induces a rotation in the ship, we can drastically simplify it by saying that a ship moving ahead will have an apparent pivot point approximately a third of the ship's length from the bow, with the opposite true when running astern. Explaining motion using pivot point theory means that we can picture it in terms of levers instead, making it much easier to understand. We can say that the rudder is effective when running ahead because it's acting on a larger lever around the pivot point. We can also say that the tug generates rotation when pushing in the centre because there is a lever between the tug and the pivot point, which disappears when the tug is pushing at the pivot point itself. We can even say that when working with two tugs, the after tug is going to be more effective because it has a larger turning lever. It really doesn't matter that the difference in effectiveness is actually caused by induced rotation from the movement of water that affects the stern more than the bow while the vessel is moving ahead. It's a similar story with the bow thruster of course. With a stationary vessel, the movement will tend to be about the pivot point at the end opposite from which the force is applied. Pivot point theory states that when moving ahead, the thruster will be less effective because it has a smaller lever, and when moving astern it will be more effective because it has a larger lever. This all appears to be true, but it's actually explained due to the motion of the vessel. When moving ahead, the bow thruster generates sideways motion at the bow, but the forward motion of the vessel means that the motion induced in the water moves along the hull, countering the rotation generated by the thruster, creating the appearance of a less effective thruster. That appearance is compounded by the effect of the thruster output interacting with the hull itself. The fast moving thruster water drifting back along the hull will tend to counter the effect of the thruster, making it less effective when moving ahead.
The opposite happens, of course, when moving astern. Pivot point theory explains it with the larger lever, while in reality the fast moving thruster output is now running clear of the hull, increasing its effectiveness, and the stern is now in clear water, so the induced motion is no longer countering the turn due to the thruster. As you can see, the motion of a ship is actually incredibly complicated and takes up a lot of brain power to work out, based on the compounding effects of the interaction of forces and fluid dynamics. It's much easier to understand in terms of a simple theory, stating that when moving ahead, the pivot point is around a third of the ship's length from the bow, and when moving astern, it's around a third of the ship's length from the stern. Unfortunately, this explanation is so good 99% of the time that confirmation bias tells us that it must be true, and we explain away any unexpected motion of the vessel by saying that ship handling is an art rather than a science. In reality, breaking down the motions into all the component parts and considering how they all interact with each other is a better way of doing it, but that always needs to be weighed against the risk of overcomplication when an easily understandable explanation will suffice most of the time. As always, I'd just like to extend a massive thank you to this channel's plus supporters on Patreon. Your support enables me to keep making these videos, so thank you all so much.